This is the Game Boy sewing machine. This officially licensed sewing machine is almost entirely controlled by the Nintendo Game Boy. I don't mean for every level you pass you get one stitch. This isn't a game. The Game Boy is simply used as an interface for the sewing machine. It tells the machine what stitch pattern to use, what letters and symbols to write, and how to embroider Super Mario onto a t-shirt. My name is Elliot and you're watching The Retro Future. Let's find out more about this obscure product. First things first, let's get this thing set up. The earlier model of this sewing machine didn't have a dock for the Game Boy, but instead just had a link cable coming out of the unit. This one still connects using the link port, but then sits flush with the unit. You then take your main spool of thread and run it down the back through a system of loops. It then comes down the front of the machine where it feeds back up through another loop where it finally then descends into the eye of the needle. After that, we need to thread the bobbin. This is achieved by sitting it on the spindle at the top of the unit. To power it, I'll be using a converter, since this is the Japanese version. Sliding the bobbin over then disengages the mechanism controlling the needle. It then uses the motor to spin the bobbin instead. After it's threaded, it sits back into its holder under the needle and threads round to the back. The software comes on a Game Boy cartridge called Raku Raku Mashin. This, of course, is Japanese, so I downloaded the English software onto my EverDrive. You can see this software was for the US Singer models, but it still works perfectly with this one. The software is used for many different things, but let's start with a simple stitch pattern. Once you've selected the ones you want, it transfers that instruction to the sewing machine. Let's sew a soft liner into some fabric, as if we were making a pocket. I am very new to sewing, so I'm sure this is painful for a lot of people to watch, but hey, the whole point of this was to make sewing fun, to get people to try it. And so there it is, the pouch that I made which fits my lens cap. This is a sewing machine and it's controlled by a Game Boy. And that's it. I mean, it's very impressive, don't get me wrong, and it makes perfect sense. Sewing machines were already very expensive, but certainly at this area where computer powered sewing machines were still a little bit new and a Game Boy could be picked up for $70. So Jaguar thought, okay, People have some sort of pocketable device which has a screen and buttons. Let's make some software for that that can control a sewing machine and boom, we have an advanced piece of kit which we haven't had to make the actual computer part for. Now that wasn't the only company that did that. There was various other companies that took advantage of this. There was a motorcycle control unit. I've seen little oscilloscopes and there's a, a pocket sonar and loads of other little things. This is just another product that we can see here controlled by Game Boy. So let's have a go at doing something fun. I would like to try and make a case for my Nintendo 3DS. I've got some fabric. I've got this, which is an old tablecloth. I've also got this, which is a really nice soft sort of velvet velour, I don't know what it's called, um, liner that we're gonna use to make a sort of a soft inside piece. Now I have actually made a few videos on my second channel about this, so go over there if you wanna watch some more. So I think I'm gonna make use of this sort of ugly color here. Uh, I quite like the look of that. So I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut out some of this fabric. Sewing is actually fairly straightforward. I mean, I'm not very good at it, but the very basic premise of it is pretty simple to understand. So to make this liner, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a sort of a lip piece that covers up the horrible edges of my cut. We're gonna fold that down and sew it. Now as for the pattern, I'm gonna use a very basic one. And so there's only one thing left to do, and that's sew. Whoa, 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 slow down, slow down. That was scary. It 
So there we have it, a little lip piece. Now what that will mean is when we fold it over like this, the end of the actual case won't have a horrible edge. It will have a nice sealed sort of closed edge, which will look really nice when we close it all up. So now all we have to do really is close it up and it's that simple. Eventually I'm gonna get better and I might use some Velcro or a little button or a zip, but for now we're just gonna make a very nice sleeve. So we're gonna fold it inside out. You wanna make sure you do all your sewing inside out so that when you turn it inside out again at the end, it's gonna have very nice my seams down the edges. So because I'm very new at this, I'm just gonna measure it with my eyes and sort of judge where I want that stitch to be. And I'm gonna put it right there. So let's go ahead and clamp that down. Now there's a button here which actually makes the stitch go back on itself. Now you wanna make sure you do that so that your sewing doesn't actually come undone. It makes it nice and rigid and sort of protected. Protected, protected. Protected. scary. And so once you've got that edge stitched, we're going to go across the bottom now. So roughly measure where you want that. I'm going to put it around about here. We bloody run out of bobbin. So then the final thing to do is cut it out. And there we have it. Now I definitely could have put some text on this thing or something, but let's just keep it simple for now and see what it looks like. And there it is, our dinner table cloth case which works absolutely perfectly as a sleeve a protective sleeve shove it into your bag your pocket whatever you want it looks nice the design is cool you can see the stitching down the side there looks absolutely mint i love it sewing machines are cool pass it on Now, although standard sewing machines did have the ability to change stitch patterns, they were mostly physical buttons. That is, of course, with the exception of the more higher-end expensive units, which had a very basic digital user interface controlled by lots of different buttons and a calculator-type LCD screen. So with the use of the Game Boy Color, Jaguar was able to cram hundreds of different letters, symbols, and stitch patterns into the software, which was all controlled by the Game Boy. Now I did mention at the beginning that you could embroider Super Mario characters onto a t-shirt. This is true. There was another piece of software available which is one of the rarest pieces of software for the Game Boy, being sold for thousands of dollars online. This allowed the sewing machine to embroider. However, another piece of equipment was required, which is extremely rare and nearly impossible to find. But I found one. These are almost unheard of to come across. Very expensive and often not complete. Mine is missing a few parts, but I'm working on something to resolve that. 
it slides in and replaces the existing platform with a motorized sliding rail which moves the fabric around at the instruction of the embroidered design. That's all we have time for today. To see how this works, hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for the second part of this video. Thanks for watching.